G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday afternoon here in Australia, market up ever so slightly, up 2%, so $7.2 trillion, which is nice. Bitcoin dominance just under 41%, so rising ever so slightly, volume down. Bitcoin price 37,000, which is nice. It was down uh, in the $36,000 range not so long ago, and gas price is about $8. All right, so interesting times. Options are ending today, Australia time, but kind of tomorrow, really stateside time. And options are going to play a big part in where the market goes over this weekend, I think. Are the bears going to try and push it down even lower? Or are the bulls going to be able to push it up higher? That will really be uh, the question and we'll have to wait and see. But what's done well in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Because we can see there's some gainers, which is nice. All right, the sand is up massively, 15%. Engine made an 11% bounce. Theta Fuel, uh, quite a nice bounce. Mana, Polygon, Flow Network. So look, we've seen some nice bounces, which is good. Will they hold? Will they last? That is the question. What about to the downside then? What hasn't fared so well in the last 24 hours? All right, Convex Finance is down. Celsius Loop Ring Gala continues to go down. They did have a brief kind of little pump up, but they had a really big pump earlier. Uh, Adam, Luna, there you go, $54. That's looking nice. I think there's some uh, good prices for Luna on offer. It's just whether they're the best prices, you know, really are the question. And again, never financial advice, ladies and gentlemen, just always my personal opinion. All right, so look, losses, not too bad. Single digits at worst. And the gainers, again, we got some nice double digit gainers and even some nice high single digit gainers, which is good. Right, let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. All right, again, has this played out? And is this now, you know, was that the bounce? We basically cover that CME gap and up from here, or which means, you know, this had to be pulled back ever so slightly. Or is there still one more kind of leg down where we, again, maybe have this one last capitulation low that really pushes down into the $28,000 level before we get a real spring? That is the question. Oh, look, maybe we just continue to go lower. It's hard to know, but maybe this has played out as I suspected, and now we're back on the way up. It was just happened a little bit sooner. Only time will tell. That's, you know, <laughs> hindsight. It's not that much of a wonderful thing because it would have been good to know uh, before it had happened. But anyway, then that's... Uh, being able to read the tea leaves as they say seeing the future i don't have those abilities this was just you know an educated guess for me and you know it happens to have played out correctly at the moment that doesn't mean it'll stay that way all right eth eth is interesting so it was you know not too long ago this candle here was red and it was pushing right down here but it's obviously been bought up pretty quickly but again, all just wondering, is this something that's going to hold? Again, the options are coming tomorrow and we're going to see whether the bears or the bulls are going to get up. And I get the feeling like this weekend might be, if we're going to have further downside, it might be that capitulation sort of thing that we have. We'll have to wait and see. Total crypto market cap, again, the same kind of thing. This was red before and it was down the bottom of this line. This was actually red candle body down sort of outside of this, but it's already pushed up. So we're waiting to see what is going to happen here. Is it going to break to the upside or fall to the downside? Again, with the options and things ending this week, I get the feeling like we might have one last capitulation downwards. Uh, but again, that, it's just a guess. It's just something I'm thinking might happen, not I think it is happening. And again, I never offer you guarantees, ladies and gentlemen. You know, It's always just the opinion of someone who's been in the space a little while, nothing more. What you do with that information after that, you know, that's up to you. You may be making much better decisions than me. And look, if you think there's no more capitulation that the bottom is in, let me know in the comments. Or if you think there's still further downside, where do you see Bitcoin going to? Or, you know, any specific sort of coin you want. But really, I kind of focus on the total crypto market cap and Bitcoin, mostly Bitcoin, because it really does lead the way. And I still get the feeling like we have we might have one more low in us going down to sort of the $30,000 range, maybe even down into the 28000 And that, I think, if we have it, will be the capitulation before we start to make our way to the upside. But again, 
No guarantees. We'll have to wait and see. All right, how are the other markets doing though? S and P five hundred. So this is what has me a little bit worried though. Is look, it's pushed down to a new low, candle body wise. Now it's still early in the day. This can easily change, but it started and it's just been pushed down, and so it looks like it's getting ready to roll over. And if it does. I just get the feeling like crypto is going to follow. What about the Dow Jones index? It's much the same. This was pushed down a little bit before, but it's still down. And we got the weekend coming up and options ending and things like that. And options doesn't necessarily mean, uh, you know, that has to affect the normal markets. But I just get the feeling like, yeah, there's another rollover coming. One more uh, low to really, you know, wash everybody out. And then from there, maybe some upside. And then the NASDAQ, same kind of thing. I mean, look at that. And NASDAQ has a lot of tech stocks and things like that. Look at that candle body. It's just pushed right down. Still early. This can change at any old time. But at the moment, it's set in a new low other than this kind of capitulation low that we've seen. And again, all the markets have got the same. Look at Bitcoin. It had that kind of capitulation low down there. Look at Ethereum. It had that capitulation low down there. The total market cap had that capitulation low down there. So that's kind of where we are at the moment. I mean, look at that. They're all just, they're looking a little bit shaky at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. And crypto is not going to be impervious or immune to this. If the bigger markets roll over, crypto will follow. Now, can crypto lead us out, like be the first one to show us that things are changing? Yes. But if Bitcoin's going up and all the others are going down, it's generally just a matter of time until Bitcoin then turns around. And if Bitcoin turns around and goes to the downside, then all the other altcoins will follow. That's just the way it is. That's the way it's been since basically all these kind of altcoins started. Bitcoin leads the way. Will it stay that way forever? I don't think it will. I don't think Bitcoin will always be the lead indicator. I think that will change over time, but just not yet. I think we're still a ways from that. So watching the big markets, if they roll over, then look out. I think crypto is going lower again. If they don't and they start to improve, then maybe Bitcoin is the leading indicator, which it could be. That's definitely a possibility. But yeah, if they roll over, I don't think Bitcoin's going to continue to go up. And look, even the gold and silver sector, same thing, rolled over again, starting to come down. It had a capitulation low, excuse me, sort of way back in December last year. Hasn't had too many of the big wicks except for that. So it's on a little bit of a different course uh, to a lot of the other stocks, and particularly Bitcoin and things like that. But nonetheless, it's still rolled over and going lower. There's still a lot of fear in the market. People are panicking, you know, and obviously selling that's why they're going down uh, and you know my thoughts on what I'm doing just chipping away at things slowly but surely now I want to get on to some news stories all right Joe Biden is to push for crypto regulation as a matter of national security now this has upsides and downsides the good side is we're going to hopefully get the clarity sooner because what's happening here is apparently within the next few weeks it is expected that the White House will issue an executive order declaring the regulation of cryptocurrencies at a matter as a matter of national security i.e. a matter of national urgency got to hurry up and get it done so what this would do is would raise the priority level that the different federal agencies would have to assign to their efforts to monitor the crypto ecosystem so he's basically saying hey you know we need some regulation on this and we need it soon it's a matter of national security not as in the you know the security of the nation is going to be you know overtly affected uh, if they don't hurry up and get it but in a sense yes they will and the reason for that is have a look here Putin urges government central bank to reach consensus on crypto and he highlights Russia's mining potential. So he says here he emphasized that Russia has strengths as a crypto mining destination. Now again, we can go back not so long ago, a couple of weeks ago, and it was like, oh, Russia's going to want to ban it and all the rest of it. And then Putin's come out and said, mm, no, I don't think that's the way to go. We want to regulate it. That's where everywhere is going now. You can see how things are, you know, progressively changing. India was going to ban it. I mean, ban it for ages. Not now they're regulating it. You know, China's talked about banning it so many times and they're not going to ban it. They cannot afford to ban it if every other country gets on board. They need to be at the forefront. So, yep, they're real staunch on it at the moment and, you know, talking it up. 
but all these other countries are slowly coming around. Australia is in the middle of doing some of the biggest uh, payment reforms in the last 25 years and blockchain and cryptocurrencies is at the forefront. And Australia wants to be one of the leaders in cryptocurrencies. Now, again, just because countries are saying this doesn't mean, oh, great, it means all the regulations are going to be wonderful. No, th they won't. There's going to be some harsh ones. And look, there does need to be some harsh regulation around certain parts of it you got to make sure it's safe and you know protect the customers we do need that kind of stuff you know stable coins i think they do need to prove that they can be backed one for one by whatever dollar they have that has to be mandated and if they can't do that well then sorry that's probably you know it's just not not going to work unless there's some kind of other algorithmic coin that's based on something else and that's different but i think if a coin is pegged to a stable uh, pegged to like the us dollar or something like that they should have to be they should have to hold that in physical sort of cash somewhere that's just the way it needs to be so there's those kind of regulations that are coming uh, and you know they can be a little bit harsh but also good in some way so we need to remember that slowly but surely they're all coming around and if joe biden you know and america the white house the fed and all that wanted to ban it they wouldn't be asking for regulation that, that they're two different things there's banning and there's regulation so just remember regulation is what we want it doesn't mean it's all going to be great some of it's probably not going to be you know very nice at all and will hurt certain sectors of the crypto industry for periods of time but i don't think anyone's going to come out and outright try and ban stuff any country that does that they will simply be left behind in this new you know cryptocurrencies blockchain tech it is the future now does that mean all cryptocurrencies are going to last no not at all there's something silly like 10,000 16,000 of them I do think the cryptocurrencies will be similar to the S&P 500 there might be 500 legit ones out of that and you know new ones coming and going and there'll be you know the kind of the blue chips you know what I mean like Microsoft Google Facebook Amazon type stocks and things like that it'll be the same for cryptocurrencies there'll be a couple of really really good ones and then there'll be the rest that kind of make up you know the rest of the space but we do need regulation about how it's run you can't just have any man and his dog just you know doing some two second course on how to create a cryptocurrency and creating one and you know having people lose all their money there's got to be protections and things around that but again there's going to be good regulation, there's going to be bad, but the fact that they are regulating it is a sign of where things are going. We are headed in the right direction, so just keep that in mind. Now, this is what I was talking about. So $1.1 billion of options are about to expire tomorrow, and that's just on Ethereum. Then we've got options for Bitcoin and you name it, all sorts of things. So this is going to be big, and this may be that, you know, something that we have a last push down or push up, whatever it may be. Now, again, there's no guarantees. Just because this is happening doesn't mean we can't go lower, you know, the week after next or something like that. But this is definitely interesting. So options uh, expiry coming up. And are we going to see, you know, a last minute kind of capitulation thing again? You know, some crazy wick down into the 28,000s or 30,000s or have we hit the bottom? Was that kind of 32,000 basically flushes where Bitcoin got to? Was that the bottom? Are we done? right another sign of where this space is going so an eight mil eight billion sorry eight billion dollar new york commercial bank is going to offer bitcoin services so it's flushing financial corporation and they've partnered with uh ny dig to offer bitcoin services to its customers this is how you know it's not going to be banned ladies and gentlemen it really isn't they're going to get strict on stable coins i have no doubt about that but i don't think it'll be as strict as what some people are thinking but it'll be stricter than obviously other people are thinking as well i don't think they're going to come and outright ban uh private stable coins i think they're just going to have certain regulations that they're going to have to follow I, you know why reinvent the wheel is what they say like there's stable coins out there so why does you know the usa need to come and you know make their own new stable coin they don't they've already got plenty of them out there i think they just regulate those who are doing it and make it that you have to have our dollar backed one for one and then there really isn't any issues other than you know security and things like that but most of these stable coin things have been pretty good lately there hasn't been any stable coin hacks that i can really think of it's more crypto exchanges and you know programs and things like that and again that's another part of regulation so for me i think 
you know, regulating stable coins, I think it's the right thing to do. But I think anyone new coming along should be able to get in. It shouldn't be a closed off thing that not we only let the people we like do it. No, if they meet the criteria and can back up one for one dollar and things like that, should be all right, no worries. But in saying that, you know, the world's not going to want 30 different kinds of, you know, US dollar stable peak. Uh, coins they're just not there might be a few that'll be really good you know usdc you know possibly tether and things like that but yeah we'll have to wait and see and i think there was something it's another article we'll have a look at talking about stable coins i think it's this one so it is so the plot to hand crypto industry to the big banks so it's more the stable coin is what they're talking about so basically what it says here is the biden admitted excuse me the biden administration doesn't want to kill stable coins altogether. Instead, the aim is to cull what these lawmakers perceive as shadowy operations like Tether. And look, hopefully Tether can still get it together and you know do the right thing. But we absolutely do need to make sure that stable coins are back one for one. Or otherwise it's all for Gazi and people are pretending not pretending they're buying Bitcoin and you know Ethereum pushing up the price with you know fake money. That is the problem right there. If Tether isn't legit and they're completely fake, and I'm not saying they're completely fake, but if they were, that would really hurt the Bitcoin price because people were buying Bitcoin with fake money and they were selling Tether to people that's not even real and backed by anything. That would hurt the space. Hence why we do need regulation. And so regulation is not bad. It just depends on the kind of regulation. But regulation in general will be good for the space. And so he's talking about them wanting regulator-friendly ones like Circle and Paxos under the umbrella of the US banking system. <sighs> so, yeah, I'm in two minds about it. Yes, we need regulation. And, you know, there is... You know, stable coins, unfortunately, probably will have to fall under the old system because they're basically just a digital version of what we already have. So, you know, I'm kind of okay with that. It's just all the other crypto stuff, I think there needs to be new regulations. I don't want us trying to fit crypto into the old regulations. Stable coins is a different story. It's just a digital version of what, you know, we already have there. So it should have to fall under that. But we should have new laws, new rules, new regulations. Now, Fidelity seeks SEC approval for Metaverse ETF. I found this interesting because Fidelity just got knocked back from their Bitcoin ETF. And again, this shows you where the space is going. They're like, radio, we can't get a Bitcoin ETF. Metaverse ETF. Then it's going to be, you know, once DeFi gets sorted out, and it will eventually, and there will be legit DeFi, I can guarantee you it's going to happen. Well, I can't guarantee you, but I'm... I'm as confident as I can be that there will be legit DeFi and then other DeFi unfortunately will disappear. But then there'll be a DeFi ETF and then there'll be a gaming and all that kind of ETF. The big money and these big banks and financial services and things like that, they aren't going to be trying to create these kind of things, putting ridiculous amounts of money into it in a space that's going to be banned, that's going to be you know kind of crushed and all the rest of it. They have some inside knowledge. They really do. And they would know that, look, yep, regulation's coming. We might not be able to tell you exactly what the regulation is, but they're not crushing and getting rid of this space. And again, this is just another example of it. So, you know, Metaverse ETF. All right, we can't get the Bitcoin spot ETF across the board, but, you know, we're going for a uh, Ethereum futures ETF, which will probably get approved soon. And a, Fidel uh, and a, sorry, a Metaverse ETF. And like I said, then you get a gaming one and then you, you'll have all sorts of ETFs. This is where the space is going. Now, it's not all great news, but I kind of like this in a way. So Senator Warren targets six more crypto miners for their energy use. So she she sent out letters to blockchain, uh, sorry, Riot, Blockchain, Marathon Digital, Stronghold Digital Mining, uh, BitDeer, BitFury Group, and BitDigital, questioning their extraordinarily high energy usage. And look, we all know it uses a lot of energy, but what's going to be really great is if they can come back and say, look, you know, we've got at least more than 50%, hopefully 70 plus percent of this is through green energy, then that really, you know, it just gets rid of any argument they have about Bitcoin and all the rest of it. But, you know, this is the space. So Senator Warren uh, and which one was it? Uh, and, oh God, what's her name? I can't even remember her name now. Uh Janet Yellen, that's it. They are really, 
they are kind of anti-crypto, but I do think they're going to come around. But again, they they're going to want to look after themselves and you know all their friends and that. But I think they do understand they just can't crush crypto because there's too many other countries trying to regulate it, not ban it. And so now America is going to be like, well, you know, the banning thing's kind of out of the question because all these other countries are talking about getting on the front foot and regulating it. So now we need to regulate it as well. What will be worrying is if they regulate it too heavy and other countries like maybe Australia, UK and who knows where else don't regulate it quite as much. They regulate it in a much more friendly manner. And then that pushes, and look, this will be great for Australia if this is what happens, then all the innovation comes to Australia and eventually America would then have to go back and go, oh no, we need to change uh, some of our regulation. I just don't think they're going to regulate it that harshly. I think that would be the downfall for America. It would really not do them any favours. And look, if it happened and Australia became the powerhouse of cryptocurrencies, I'd be you know, ecstatic. That would be great. But, you know... America is still kind of one of the central financial power hubs of the world, so they really need to be on the front foot uh, or get left behind. And I just I can't see them doing it. I think a lot of this is all posturing and, you know, they're talking harsh. And I, I really do believe that they know where things are going and that, you know, they need to get on the front foot. But they can drag their heels a little bit because they're one of the big superpowers and they can, you know, definitely be a little bit stricter than some other places but they wouldn't want to be too strict because that would just really ruin things uh for like the u.s for the u.s dollar staying as the uh world reserve currency if they were too harsh on cryptocurrencies they would lose that and some other country if that may have picked it up and again let's say it's not australia let's say it's russia for whatever reason it is uh if russia had really good regulations and all of a sudden people russia is probably a bad example because they got a lot of problems going on there some other country let's say new zealand let's use them for example new zealand had all these favorable you know crypto regulations and all this crypto stuff went there and that could you know likely push them to be one of the powerhouses of the financial world like i really do believe el salvador in the long run is going to be a powerhouse in cryptocurrencies because of what uh president uh bukele is doing i I think he's making some smart smart decisions he's not just out there constantly buying you know he's trying to buy the dip and things like that and look the prices absolutely could go lower but i believe he will continue to buy those dips and in the long run when it all starts to go up i mean i think they've got they got a few bitcoin already they definitely have a few bitcoin and that is only going to be worth more and as long as they hold on to them and use them as a store of wealth like the rest of us in this space i think they're going to be rewarded quite handsomely in years to come all right that's it for me bit of news there like i said i'm 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 thinking that maybe there's one more push down and it's, you know, possibly, you know, in the next 24 hours or so could be completely wrong. Maybe the bottom's in and it's just up from here. And look, also maybe the bottom's not in yet, but it still doesn't come for another week or two yet. We'll have to wait and see. But my gut suspicion says keep an eye on the charts this weekend, particularly over the next sort of 24 hours or so, and be ready to take advantage of any dips that may come. Stay safe. Be kind to one another pretty hard to be on the gain train at the moment but there are some small gains there and i'll see you next time